welcome to Business 24. I'm Comfort Amodo, and we are reaching you on NTA News 24 from the nation's capital, Abuja. All right, from Cairo in Egypt to Lomi in Togo and now to East Africa. I'm talking about Nairobi in Kenya. Niger is, of course, gradually conquering the continental market with the establishment of trade houses in these trade hubs. And I guess you want to know how all this came to fruition. Details shortly. Now let's do a little bit of banking now. NICEL Microfinance Bank has now widened its scope of operations by coming up with an initiative known as Unbalanced Sheet Lending Portfolio to promote financial inclusion. Of course, what is the latest concerning this Business 24 is ready to give an expository explanation on today's outline. And we'll be bringing you our export tips, capital market review, all packaged for you on this program this week. I'm Comfort and Modu. Welcome. <music> Welcome back. All right, let's go straight to the business of the day. Now, African countries can trade better with each other with enhanced economic corridors and trade policies that will spur economic growth across trade blocks in the region. This is a position of some key players in the trade and export sector in Nairobi as Nigeria looks to promote its brands in Africa and the presence of the Nigerian export trade house now in Nairobi, Kenya, established by the Nigerian Export Promotion Council. Is there enough market intelligence to guide the whole process? Africa is set to have huge domestic markets for various goods and services and a destination for leading brands. To sustain this trajectory, key players say Africa must work together to develop a unified regulatory framework and policies that will be a win-win for African countries. This is a position of some key players in the trade and export sector in Nairobi as Nigeria looks to promote its brands in Africa. If we don't break the policy barriers that we enable export and import, then it will be difficult uh, for our products, uh, lots of products from creative industries, from agricultural produce to even leave Nigeria. Kenyans can do business in America and Nigerians can do business in America faster than we can do business together. But now, given the strength of both countries, the population's growing, economies growing, I think it's high time that we come together and do business within Africa and show the strength of each nation. Because we've got fantastic people, very innovative, smart people who have an amazing amount of entrepreneurship. So why not take that entrepreneurship and grow it within Africa rather than taking it out of Africa? These business tycoons and diplomats are excited about the renewed partnership and prospects of elevated bilateral relations between Nigeria and Kenya, especially with the presence of a Nigerian export trade house now domiciled in Nairobi, Kenya, established by the Nigerian Export Promotion Council. You know, in, in, in West Africa, we all know that you have the best shea butter. Uh, the commodity, in, in terms of commodities, why aren't we actually getting shea butter here in East Africa? We're actually getting from Uganda or southern, you know, South Sudan. Those are the things which we feel we can actually benefit on, from this, you know, endeavor we've actually just established with the export trade hubs. Once we have that in in hand, and we tap into perhaps you know the chartered private um, means of transportation, then I think you know trade will actually increase. We're making plans with this export trade house that we just uh, commissioned. We are making plans uh, to see how we can ship that product down to Kenya. And it's not only share butter, we're also uh, identifying some other products that are required uh, in Kenya from Nigeria. They insist that infrastructure is vital to intra-African trade if Africa must harness the full potential of export across the continent for an inclusive and sustainable development on the block. <music> Uh, with all those initiatives by the Export Promotion Council and the suggestion by policy makers that we're expecting better and deeper integration with African countries in terms of market integration and access to these countries as well. Now, my NICEL Microfinance Bank is now in the vanguard of deepening financial inclusion among various classes of the society 
by providing loans. Kule at DAU will now tell us what needs to be done to access the loans. No one is left out in the offer talking about the new unbalanced sheet lending unlike the previous package which was essentially for operators engaged in production rather than trading. First on the list is salary advance. It's for individuals in paid employment whose salaries have been consistent for three months. Aunle Ijoma is the head credit and marketing department of Nassau Microfinance Bank. She disclosed that the offers have liberal conditions. For salary earners, um, government workers, blue chip companies and all, they, um, we have a product for them, salary advance. Right? It's tied to their salaries. They don't have to open salary accounts with us. But we need to see their pay slips. We need to get letter, um, see their letter of appoint, uh, appointment and their confirmation letters from their organizations. And of course, we'll do our due diligence with our organization to make sure that they are still working with that um, place and they don't have any, uh, on, not, they don't have a lot of burden on their salaries. Right? Because statutorily, we're not supposed to take um, more than, well, at the end of the day, some a person, I think they, the cumulative repayment on any salary earner, we're not supposed to take more than a certain percentage. And that we must take into consideration other loans that they have from other institutions. And we give to individuals that have the capacity. You know, they need money for something. So every Nigerian that is economically active has um, a source of income from which we should be able to take repayments. Every Nigerian that has heard about us um, associates us with uh, intervention funds, government funds, and all. So the on balance sheet lending, which is basically lending from our own monies, not our own depositors' funds, not um, government funds, is just letting uh, the public know that yes, we're a bank, we're a channel for intervention funds, but we're still a bank. So we're still in the business of banking, which is to take deposits from uh, the surplus and then give to the deficit areas, people that need money for their businesses or um, I don't know, anything that they need money for. SME loan is for businesses that have been registered with the Corporate Affairs Commission and engaged in trading activities. Approval of loan application depends on the number of indices, including the monthly turnover of business to be financed and suitable collateral. But uh, the women, the micro businesses, they are very eager to pay back because it's true, it's, they can see the growth in their business. They can see that they are able to meet up with things that they wouldn't have been able uh, to. Then for the small and medium enterprises, it depends on how much that they are asking for. Up to, uh, I think, less than a million. You don't need to bring a guarantor, I'm not sure. Um, not, I can't say for sure, about, but less than a million, we can get, you just come with us, come to us, we give you uh, our requirements, but for the collateral, it's just a guarantor that we're asking for. Anything above that, you have to give us guarantor, tangible collateral, if you're in business and you own your shop, very easy, you give us your shop uh, papers. If you don't own your shop, you give us any other collateral that you have, vehicles, and all that stuff. So we try to work with what you have. We're a national microfinance bank, and in the space of uh, three years, we've, um, we've done really well, if I may say so myself. Right? Our balance sheet size is um, it's quite commendable. The work that we have done as uh, an intervention channel for the masses uh, speaks for itself. Petty traders have also been incorporated into the scheme. The benefits for people in this regard ranges from 50 to 300,000 Naira. For the petty traders, between 50 and 300,000, they can take up to that. For SMEs, from 300,000 to 250 million, they can do that with us. So you can give out about 50 million? We can, we are open to considering it. We're open to considering it. But what we work with is 50 million, right, for SMEs. 
But if um, conglomerates, like you said, 250 million were open to considering it. You know. Then for the salary earners, like I said, it depends on what their salary can take, yes. The mandate is financial inclusion for the bank, right? So the intervention products for the masses financial inclusion, we've been in our various locations and we, um, the outreach target for us, which is all local government areas. So everything is just working out. And so what we're doing is um, combining the intervention business with our own business so that either way, every Nigerian has a chance through us. Starting out, it wasn't good. Starting out, it wasn't good because um, government money is everybody's money. That's the Nigerian uh, her, that's the Nigerian perception of it. But what we've been able to do through our corporate communications department is to send out awareness campaigns on social media, print media, um, TV media. You know, because my executive management, led by the MD, has been on uh, NT and some other um, channels talking about this. So what we've been seeing is traction, really. We've been seeing a lot of progress. People are now paying back. The interactions on, on social media has, uh, they've just been um, engaging, so to speak. So everybody is waking up to the fact that these are loans and they must be paid back. They don't like it, but they have seen that it's a responsibility. And so we're seeing, we're seeing traction there. With over 100 branches nationwide and the FCT, over 600 million under the three categories of loans has been disbursed as loans with a resolve that loan products for agriculture, covering farmers, and all businesses in the agri value chain will be launched in the course of the year. Kunle Adeyeye for Business 24. And definitely the presence of Nigerian trade houses in Egypt, Cairo, and now in Kenya will boost trade exports in Nigeria. So let's go to the export trade zone to see how traders or exporters can access this market seamlessly. <music> Nigerian uh, electric wire and cable till today remains the very best in terms of quality. It's better than Chinese uh, wire and cable. So if we were to take Gambia, for example, as a market to explore with that kind of industrial product, of course, you can be sure. Don't even uh, mention when we talk about cement, for example. For me, every West African country is a construction zone. So anything that goes into construction will be a market uh, breaker into any of those markets. Couscous, for example, is not a major staple in Nigeria. But couscous is an everyday food in Banjul, just as it is in uh, uh, Dakar and in uh, Freetown nearby. So I'm a woman in Nigeria. Um, I'm I have perfected my, uh, what do you call it, food packaging and labeling. I would rather go there with my samples of my products and be looking for a partner there whose uh, local staple foods I can join up with and say, okay, we are doing this together and packaging for this market. The same way that our Nollywood have captured the African continent, it is possible for Nigerian cuisine to also capture the African continent as a first step, and then we launch out into the world. Now, MSMEs are doing fantastic. Nigerian MSMEs, especially the women, because they are the ones more visible in terms of stuff like uh, food packaging and processing, um, uh, what we call it, fashion, beads, culture items, sometimes household uh, uh, utilities for export. That's where Nigeria is 
building greater and greater comparative advantage and the feeling is there's a woman who did a goosey ready for the pot. It contained the spices, it contained crayfish, it contained the, uh, 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 what we call it, crumbs of dry fish already. So all you needed to do was to put this in your pot, uh, put the um, amount of water that she recommended, put it in your pot, and they put it uh, on the fire. And in five minutes, your egusi soup was ready. What better strategy than to pick this woman, for example, and say, okay, from now on, when Nigerian troops are going abroad, they're going to go with uh, pot-ready Nigerian food. And you pay her in dollars because that becomes an export. So it's now time for MSMEs to begin to develop themselves having at the back of their mind that they are going for that market. One, they need to think uh, cluster um, wise. They need to uh, now start building partnerships and cooperatives. They need to, because uh, uh, individually, like you saw in Togo, I think I mentioned it in Togo, there's this concept of wheelbarrow export. So I have my own business. Maybe due to funds or machine and equipment, I can only produce 100 kilograms of a stuff. But when the order is going to come, it's going to be in containers. Maybe minimum of 20 foot container will take 20 tons. That's 2,000, no, 20,000 kilograms. I can only produce 100. But when you have the cluster strategy or the export cooperative, and here I think I'm talking both to the MSMEs as well as to Nigeria Export Promotion Council, there is the um, lingering, out, out, it's lingering now because it's not been activated, the issue of state committees on export promotion. This is the time to now bring them also in so that you can help the MSMEs to come together, to pool uh, the technical word is to aggregate what individuals are doing. Then you have accredited, and it's the process of accreditation has to be very, very thorough at the NEPC level. Now we're going to be joining Professor Uche Uwaleke to tell us how the capital market did. Hello, Prof. Do we have any cost to worry or did the market do well? Thank you. Uh, well, th this week has been characterized by um, heavy sell-offs. Uh, week on week, we are witnessing uh, a depreciation of um, about 0.71%. Um, um, the market took off on a negative note. Uh, and it's also ending on a negative um, note. Um, on Friday, uh, the decline uh, was as um, you know, much as 0.7%. Uh, so we had four trading days uh, in the red, if you like. And um, it was only on Wednesday that the markets, uh, the all share index um, appreciated. Uh, recall that the previous week, uh, the market on week on week basis um, you know, appreciated by 0.71%. So this week um, opened on a negative note. So we saw a lot of profit taking. We saw a lot of um, sell-offs such that um, as we speak, the all the all share index has moderated uh, below the 50,000 uh, points, um, now about uh, 49,664 uh, points. The market capitalization is just barely 27 trillion. And um, the year-to-date return, too, has moderated to about 16.39%, um, you know, which, of course, you know, is below inflation rate of 18.6%, um, uh, which, you know, uh, somehow gives uh, a cost to worry. So you notice that the um, negative sentiments witnessed um, 
particularly with respect to um, high cap stocks um, such as MT MTN, um, which is now about trading around 200 naira, um, Zenith Bank around 21 naira, um, Jitco uh, around um, about 20, 20 naira, um, and um, some others you know contributed to the uh, the uh, the depreciation you know that, that we saw um, just a few um, stocks you know gained uh, overall during the week and we are mainly penny stocks uh, stocks like you know champ plc um, unity bank of course you know these stocks are below 50 you know 50 cup of, you know, per share so uh, overall we have seen um, declines um, particularly in terms of um, you know volume uh, of trade um, this week and it's not uh, difficult to see why um, the market is still responding to um, if you like the um, the macro economic um, numbers uh, uh, you know some of which are not so um, favorable now talking about um, high rising inflation rates uh, talking about you know volatility in the forex market okay so these are um, factors that are contributing to, um, you know, this negative um, investor um, sentiment. And um, if you're looking at this sectoral performance, um, a number of sectors to, um, you know, declined. Talking about the banking uh, index, uh, the, you know, industrial index, um, with just um, one or two of, of them, uh, you know, um, you know showing up um, now you find that going into next week um, the market's performance is also likely to be mixed the performance may not be uh, too different from what we have seen uh, so far and that's because number one on the 15th of august that's talking about next week the national bureau of statistics is likely to release the inflation rate for the cpi information for uh, July um, and the expectation is that inflation um, figure will come in higher than what 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 it is uh, already that is the figure we, we have as of June that's 18.6 so we're likely to see a higher inflation rate again on the 15th of August the um, of course the Central Bank of Nigeria on the authority of the debt Man management office will be issuing uh, 225 billion Naira bonds um, FGN bonds in three tranches of 75 billion, okay, you know, to the market. So uh, these developments are also likely to affect the market one way, one way or the other, because as we see, um, uh, as interest rates in the um, as interest rates go up, or if you like, as yields in the fixed income, you know, uh, rise, uh, there is this likelihood that um, uh, investors, uh, traders, portfolio managers you know, will keep migrating from the equities market, you know, to the fixed income uh, market. So with governments, you know, um, you know, borrowing, um, uh, we, we, you know, you should expect that rates are driven up and you should also expect that um, uh, investors will um, be selling shares to be able to, um, you know, buy what may be considered a safer asset class, especially in, in, in this environment, um, in an environment of uncertainty, in an environment um, that is characterized by, you know, high, uh, high volatility. But uh, my advice in a period like this, you know, is always to not to panic. <music>